Hello beautiful creatures, welcome back to Of Crafts and Curios. It's been a while, I'm sorry. I am back here, let's do this. Today I will be showing you how I have prepared my altar doll for the upcoming Samhain Sabbath here in the Southern Hemisphere. This marks the final pig in the wheel and this is my third video in the Wheel of the Year series that I have going on my channel. I'm so excited to share this with you as Samhain is one of my favorite Sabbaths as the final of three harvest festivals and of course it's the spookiest. So if you're here to learn a little bit about Samhain or just want to watch me create an aesthetic doll video, I'm so happy to have you along for the ride. Samhain, or as you may know it, Halloween, is the celebration which falls at the midpoint between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. For us in the southern hemisphere this falls around the 1st of May. For those of you in the north this is what you'll be celebrating in October. The wheel of the year has come to its final peg and at this time harvest is coming to an end. The now barren mother gives way to rulership of the crone and the goddess has descended to the underworld. This time of year has been said to be the time in which the veil between worlds is the thinnest and therefore things are most likely to cross the threshold the easiest. This is inclusive of all kinds of things but most importantly for the effigy I'll be making is the thinness between the veil of the dead and the living. I think this is the most common association with Samhain and so I wanted to create a somber morning doll to sit on my altar this Sabbath. So for this I'll be using a body of a Skeleta doll and the head of a Spectra doll to get that ghostly appearance. So to begin with I'm just chopping off my Spectra dolls here because I'll be removing the hair plugs. My little cat came to join me while I was doing this. He's a bit spooky and cutie. But yeah, just giving her a really short crop haircut so that when I put the dolls in the hot water to make their heads nice and soft and easy to remove, there won't be so much hair floating around. I didn't bother removing the Skeleta hair because I wasn't sure when I'm going to use that or if I'll want to keep that hair, so I left her hair on. These babies are going to cook for about a minute before they're nice and soft and squishy, making the heads really easy to remove without damaging the pigs. Once the heads are nice and squishy, I'm just going to drain a bit of water and then squeeze those heads off with ease because the vinyl is nice and soft. Moving on to de-plugging the hair plugs, I'm just taking some scissors and shimming them around. Shimming? Jimming? I don't know. I'm rambling them around in the head until all the plugs come loose and I can pull them out through the neck hole. So I attach the head onto its new body and I'm now just using some acetone based remover to remove all of the factory paint from this head. This is a relatively quick process the higher your acetone content is and soon the face will be completely bare and I'll be able to begin my face up. And there we go the doll is all ready for her first spray of Mr. Super Clear. In Auckland I get mine at Hobby City. There's a, about a six week wait time at the moment. So now moving on to the face. I'm beginning with blushing the face with some pastels. I'm still not super confident with this method. I think it's a bit messy but I did my best to just lay down some base colors before adding in detail with my colored pencils. I use water-based colored pencils as it applies the best with Mr. Super Clear. So I'm just sketching out my shapes and then I'll be adding in detail as I go. For those of you who are used to celebrating Samhain in October, I'm sure it can seem a bit odd to be celebrating Halloween in May. And personally, I like to celebrate Halloween in October and Samhain in May as two different celebrations. Because they are really two different things, Halloween or Saints Day, whichever modern secular adaption you partake in, it's not as closely tied to traditional pagan ritual like many appropriated holidays are, like Yule for example. And as a lot was appropriated and dulled down with the spirit of modern religion, I think you can easily celebrate both. So costumes in October and honouring the dead in May. The best of both worlds. Now that her face is done, I'm going to give her some more super clear and then I'm just going to let her dry before moving on to the hair. I wanted to do something big and voluminous this time as I really liked the volume of my Lunasar doll's hair. So I'm just taking my pre-wefted curled hair and taking my favorite 450 glue and sticking that bad boy on in a circular motion. This creates a way to hide the wefts and as you can see there's a lot of volume but I will be styling it later, don't worry. 
but yeah I like this contrast the high contrast of this doll is really effective I think for this Sabbath effigy and I've planned quite a voluminous outfit so I think it will all balance out with the amount of volume contrast right now it looks a bit crazy but I promise when I style it it looks cute so for the doll's outfit I'm taking this organza and a lot of inspiration from the Tiyuta Matoshi gowns those beautiful voluminous sheer gowns that you might have seen all over the internet and because her hair was driving me insane I quickly styled it and pulled it back so that there wasn't so much volume at the roots but yeah, I'm just beginning to sew this very sheer organza gown I want you to see the skeleton through the outfit so I really toyed back and forth with what kind of outfit I would do but I'm kind of going to do this peasant blouse top with this huge voluminous skirt very Toyota Matoshi inspired so I gathered a lot of chul with a giant ribbon to give that kind of fairy tale essence to this giant dress and with her dress done, it is time to move on to her accessories. I love her black morning dress, but I also want to tie back into the ancient Celtic fire festivals that Samhain is one of and has origins in. The tale goes that during the first frost of autumn, families would allow their hearth fires to burn out and afterwards would gather to witness the Druid priest relighting the community's sacred fire. Worship, prayer and food offerings will also occur alongside ritual sacrifice and at the end of the festivities each family would return home carrying a flame to relight their own hearth. So to invoke that orange fire colour I wanted to add some streaks to her hair to kind of also call back to my Mabon doll to kind of tie in the series a bit and then with her accessories I'll be including that sacred flame that she carries home in a lantern. And of course, back to the more modern day understanding of Samhain, a morning veil is a necessity. So I began with an organza fabric to use for my morning veil, but the fabric was so stiff, even when I pinned it down in a lot of places to really secure it, that it was really triangular and too voluminous. So I quickly recognized that even though this was beautiful and I really liked the crystal organza, it needed to be mesh. So, had to just quickly make a roundabout turnaround, and yeah, I think the mesh one is much better, much more morning veil esque. Using pins to secure this is also really great because it means the doll has a bit of movability, like you can remove the veil. See, here it is with the underskirt and overskirt together, and it is just incredible. Her silhouette is massive, and I think she's one of the most extreme dolls I've made. She gives me RuPaul morning eleganza extravaganza. Now moving on to her eyes, I'm taking my Liquitex gloss varnish and just bringing her a bit to life with some gloss in her eyes and her lips so they look a bit dewy, a bit wet, maybe she's been crying since she is a morning doll. So yeah, I think this is a great addition to any customization as it does really bring them to life. Um, all my Wheel of the Year dolls are holding something symbolic of their sabbat. So I thought I'd start with a pumpkin. I know, very kitschy, very Halloween-y. My heart wasn't in it. It's not the best pumpkin I've ever made. But if you wanted to make a pumpkin, this is how you do it. I'm just using Super Sculpt D, the one that comes in the huge pound box. Um, and yeah, just taking some thin ridges, ridging it out after making a small circle and I also made this rotting pumpkin because I thought rotting, end of harvest, the dead, that kind of tied in since I really didn't like my Halloween lantern because yeah I didn't want to do a Halloween doll. I really do want to do a Halloween doll one day, maybe in October that's what I'll do, but I really had my heart set on this lantern so I grabbed some sticks from outside, some twigs. So I made a pattern out of cooking paper just to understand the size that was going to be the final product does end up a little bit bigger but isn't that always the way and I just started gluing together a basic lantern shape so basically a rectangle and then some cross beams and a top and a bottom 
And there you have it, a little lantern to carry sacred fire back to your hearth with. I know that it's not fireproof, it's twigs, it would burn up, but it's the smallest thing and the lightest thing that I knew the doll could hold. Then I made a little flame, I cooked my uh, polymer clay objects, gave them a quick paint. I do like the pumpkin, the pumpkin's cute, but it's not Samhain, it's Halloween, you know? It's quite a, a nightmare before Christmas Halloween. So yeah, here I'm just painting on some mold on my open, cut open pumpkin. I do like how this came out too. I do think she could hold this and it still makes sense. And yeah, then I added some glue and just shook my flame around in some glitter so the light will catch. If you have a better way of making fake fire, please let me know. And here are all the completed objects of choice. I like all of them equally, but I do think the lantern is the most Samhain, so it will be the one I think that wins out. But let's see them all together. The Ron Pumpkin, adorable. The Pumpkin Lantern, adorable. The Lantern Lantern, phenomenal. So that's the one I'm gonna go with. It makes the most sense for the Sabbath. And because of the glitter, it is the most striking when the veil is down over it. And here is the completed doll. I am so happy with her. I think that she is the perfect little Samhain doll. She has such a whimsical expression. I love her massive gown and her massive morning veil. I think she's just beautiful and delightful and really fits in with my other Sabbath dolls. They look beautiful together. She's going to look amazing on my altar, so I'm really happy. And I do really like the flame lantern that she's carrying. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something about Samhain. Maybe you could teach me something about Samhain. What are you guys doing to celebrate the upcoming Sabbath in your neighborhood? And if you did want to see more videos and more content, do hit that subscribe button. Leave us a like and a comment. And we'll see you soon with more crafts and more curios.